Hi guys, I'm Shmi, and today you join me for what is easily my most exciting test drive of this year for a number of reasons. Firstly, it is a hugely anticipated supercar. Secondly, it was victorious at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. And thirdly, I have one on order myself because today I'm going to be taking a look at the new 2017 Ford GT. We're going to take a full look inside and out all around the car then i'm going to get an opportunity to go for my first ever drive in my future car in the new model ford gt and better still ford of europe have sent the car up to me today in the ken gorms in scotland surrounded by some beautiful scenery and some amazing twisty roads on which to drive the new supercar so they return to Le Mans with this 50th anniversary celebration of the 1966 GT40 victory. The race car version of the new Ford GT was victorious again in 2016. This is the homologated road version. Today I'm going to see what it's all about, but let's get started and check out the new Ford GT. Excuse me for my amazingly excited voice right now. I am pretty much in dreamland with the keys to this car behind me, but let's walk around it and talk about this in an awful lot more detail. And firstly, the history of the Ford GT. We had obviously the GT40 that was victorious in Le Mans, like I said, dominating the podium back then. Then Ford introduced the new GT in 2004, but for the 50th anniversary in 2016, they wanted to return to Le Mans and originally started trying to build a Mustang for the purpose. But to keep the car resembling a Mustang, that meant that it didn't really have the best drag coefficient to go to Le Mans, race and win. So secretly behind the scenes, a small team of under 20 designers and engineers set about designing and creating this thing behind me, which they then launched to the world in Detroit at the North American International Auto Show in January 2015, when we were completely not expecting it. After that, they then announced it was going to return to Le Mans, it was going to race, and that of course meant they had to homologate a series of build run of the car being built by Multimatic in Markham, Ontario, Canada, and this is that car. So there are going to be roughly a thousand of them built, 500 have already been allocated through the application process they created for the car in April 2016. That's where I was fortunate enough to find myself with an allocation for one of these that's going to be coming in the future. And I'll be sharing that full build process or full ordering process until the car arrives with me as well. But that is obviously quite an exciting machine. But now let's head in and talk a little bit more about it and what we're actually looking at. So the 2017 Ford GT is a mid-engined rear wheel drive supercar. It costs around $500,000 when you've added your specification. This car's finished in performance blue. At the back, you have the 3.5 litre twin turbocharged V6, creating 656 PS, which is 647 brake horsepower. It has 746 Newton meters of torque, and this car has a top speed of 216 miles per hour. That's 348 kilometers an hour. It is 
fast. And this obviously being the road version has the full potential of that power. In the race trim, it's limited to around 500 horsepower for regulations and for balance of power, for keeping the grid even and creating an exciting race. But you just look at it and it looks aerodynamic, aggressive and built for purpose. Multimatic are wizards at building race cars. They know their stuff. This car has a carbon fiber monocoque, carbon fiber body panels, and the whole body is kind of shrink wrapped around the components that it needs. So for example, if we come down here, you can see completely through the back of the car there with my Focus RS lurking behind another Ford Performance product. But it's basically wrapped around this tiny engine that they've put back here. So it's a V6. A lot of people might say, where's the V8? But this makes it lighter. 1385 kilos curb weight for the car. That's pretty light when you think about these things and you think about the power, giving it 467 horsepower per ton. That is a lot. That's a very strong number. Now this is sitting in sport mode. So it's got the active aero rear wheel wing sitting in the raised position but it also has a track mode that I'm going to show you shortly whereby it will drop 50 millimeters and it does it almost instantly it just sort of sits down and does its thing walking around the car though you can see those sort of openings under the buttresses are not the aer only aerodynamic feature as we come round towards the front you can see there's a lot of opening underneath the number plate here you can see the way the air is channeled through the carbon fiber front splitter here so you've got visible carbon fiber around these areas huge cooling radiators in the front in that area there's no storage up here you've just got a tiny boot in the rear that i'll show you shortly as we come down the car you've got these sort of gaping openings almost everywhere you look like here for example it just opens out through to sort of remove the air that's swelling up from those front wheel arches and feed it away down the back of the car. Cool thing, these radiators here, located just outside the buttresses, actually take the air in, then it comes back through here, through this part, to go into the engine bay for cooling. So this has three purposes. One is for the airflow through there, one is the active sort of aero going towards the rear wing, and the other is the rigidity of the structure by having that out towards the wheels. So everything is completely engineered for purpose. It is built as a race car, so much more than anything else. You can take your sort of track versions of other road cars, but this was built as a race car, and now it's been converted over to the road. So as we come round the back towards that rear wing, it is highly active, so it has air brake functionality going up sort of almost vertical. It will sit down flush with the bodywork, so it would come back and sort of have that lower um, sort of view line. It has this gurney flap at the rear that you can see here um, that helps with downforce when required, um, giving it a little bit more sort of drag uh, to get the power down. And then if we sort of come in <laughs> underneath this, I'm also going to point out the airflow that comes out through the rear lights. That is a vent for the air that's come in through the front to exit out the back, as well, of course, as the sort of lower open areas too. Then you've got these fighter jet inspired, I mean, it's all sort of fighter jet inspired, rear exhaust pipes, twin exhaust pipes, huge things. Um, but the way they've again got sort of cool shapes and styling to them is just pretty neat. And I'm just going to point out the number plate, GT 2017 Ford of Europe, which is quite a nice touch for this car, their sort of press car. I suppose you could say that they've allowed me to drive today. So let's come all the way round. Um, the mirrors are another feature I like. I love the way the stalks work and the way the design is sort of shaped. But what I'm going to do is open up the door, which you do by a little press here of the button. It pops and then you uh, lift open the dihedral door. And this is where you get a nice view through there of the way it's sort of open to the ground. And the door opens up revealing a very, very focused cabin where it's all carbon fiber, the carbon sill, the seat that is fixed to the top, so this part does not move at all. The bits you move are the pedal box down here. It slides with that lever. The steering wheel that has all the driver commands on it. It can be a little bit intimidating, but I'll go through that. You've got the full digital display for the driver and you can tilt the rear backrest forwards and back slightly. But again, carbon everywhere. The blue Alcantara in here is really nice with the exterior. It just looks, I mean, focused and to the point. And yes, lots of parts are shared with other Ford models, but that means they work, they're reliable. They've had huge amounts of research and development budget spent on them. But this, just look here, for example, look at the way the airflow comes through this part of the car. 
you can see here the way we can see through the front it comes through uh, the swelling is reduced and that air can flow around and you can just see all the way through and then here for example you can just see straight into the aluminium structure so the car has well this carbon fiber monocoque an aluminium structure and it even has a roll cage built in here to uh, the tub itself to the whole car so it has a built-in roll cage you don't need to install one if you want to go racing and then if you sort of look all the way through you can see the sort of lower suspension arms that go all the way through and that can sort of you can lock out the coiling springs as well when you put it down into track mode so it basically has two completely different suspension setups um, i'm going to open up the engine bay quickly give that a press and we can come round to the back and lift this open which opens up through the wing there and then well you can't get too much the engine itself up here the oil uh, coolant taps are coolant cover behind that but there's your 3.5 litre eco boost or eco beast we could call it because this is a bit of a beast isn't it and then that's the extent of your luggage capacity i'm not going to lie you're not going to fit much stuff in there but this car is not built for road trips it's just got your sort of support kit those bits and pieces but you're not going to be getting many clothes in and then if we look under here you can see how this is raw carbon fiber on the boot lid on that flap um, which is very very light as well unsurprisingly push that down and it clicks into place there but even here you've got sort of openings um, and vents and ducts all to do with the airflow and the air management around the car and making it optimal for the purpose if we open this up um, the windscreen I'm going to talk about as well is Gorilla Glass, the same as you'll find on your phones, so that means it can be lighter and thinner for the same amount of strength as a traditional window. And another cool thing is you actually have a light that comes on in here. Um, I'm not entirely sure how you do it. There we go. It says it's unlocked, and if I were to lock the car, it would change, and that's representative of your position indicator on the race car, so more sort of race characters um, fed through there. Just everywhere, it's carbon fibre, and this, by the way, is a pre-production car. Ford have very kindly allowed me to create this video with it um, but even still it looks good it feels good and it's the very car I went in with Harry Tinknell at the Goodwood Festival of Speed you get your plaque here with the uh, information your serial number about which car you have Ford sync system but I'll go through <laughs> even more of this and the controls and things shortly but let's just take a quick look at it with the doors up which just looks mega what an incredible machine and one I'm not gonna lie I am really rather excited to take for a drive any moment. I mean, this has just been a walk around the exterior and I haven't even said everything about it, but for the moment, let me jump in and get this started up. It's time then, and I've got the key here, and you can also open that rear hatch from the key here as well, by the way, or unlock and lock the car, or even chime the horn. We'll turn that off, it's a little bit loud, but it is time to step into the car, which you can do in a number of different ways, but I'm just going to climb in, stick my bottom in and pull my legs over the side sill as well. And then you can pull the door down with this grab handle as well, which is kind of floating, but feels very sturdy and neat too. So drop the door down and this is where it's just futuristic and sort of stripped out. I mean, you've got this structural part here, but everything underneath it is hollowed for obviously weight saving and almost a little storage area. You can put your uh, dirty laundry or something in there too. But everything, I mean, it feels like a race car. You've got this steering wheel that I said is quite intimidating, but you've got your mode selectors, uh, your lights, wipers, indicators, uh, cruise control, and then your sort of media control. So everything's on the steering wheel. The paddles on the back are sort of fixed to the wheel as well and you've got that driver digital display too. So I think it is time to press the big red button down here, put on the brake and fire it up. And there we go, we're in live. So the display has a series of different modes depending, well, how you're set up, it will show things differently. You've got shift lights up here, which showed a really nice uh, display as it turned on. But this is the coolest thing. If I put it first into sport mode, you can see that shifting to give us a larger gear selector and give us the gauge information at the right. If I go one further, we can pop it into track mode and watch this. It just drops down, the whole car drops to the ground. You've got even more displays and things have changed there, but the way it, it sinks 50 millimeters, normally cars have to take time to process the hydraulics and sort of lower them gently and then put them back up. But in here, it's one press of the button and it does it. And if the wing wasn't already up, it would now be up. You can see in the rear view mirror, perhaps, that the wing is there in the raised position. And then to put it back, you literally just turn that and up you go, 50 millimeters. Just like that, it pops up into place. 
down again. That is just the coolest feature you could ever imagine about a car. And there's more in here that I want to show and talk about when we come back. But I think enough of that. I'll need to drive it first in normal mode to see what it is like. You can't really use track mode on the road because of how low it goes. But now it's time for my first drive in my future car in this, the Ford GT. And I cannot wait for this. So let's head out on the road, some amazing roads and see what it's all about. I, I, I have no words, let's go. To get started in here, firstly, it's putting the pedal box in position, then it's moving the steering wheel, then belting out. So we've got the normal seats, but you can also get the Ford Performance harnesses. So there are some mounts already behind the seats for those. You can adjust the backrest, but this is pretty comfortable how I am right now. Mirrors, of course, you've got a little bit of a view backwards. With the wing up, I can't see too much. But then to go into gear, you swizzle the center into drive. We're in full normal everything. You can turn off the electric handbrake or just drive through and then you just start pulling away. Here we are then, me and the new car, and you definitely feel immediately like race car. And that is the big sort of talking point about this. This is not a road car that's been developed for the track. This is a track car that's been homologated for the road. It feels raw, it feels pure, and it feels a little bit different. It's gonna take some sort of getting used to things like the steering. It's hydraulically assisted, but the weight feel of it is so different to, I guess, normal existing cars. The suspension is a race-inspired push from suspension setup, so it's very, very firm, and this is normal, like I said, you've got a sort of front nose lift, but normal mode even is already on the firm side in British roads and not the best for, for testing this kind of thing, but that's what gives it the feedback, and as you turn it, you get the strange sort of sensation of the weight, and I'd read about this before, and you feel it when you're driving, that it doesn't give you the normal sort of heavy steering feel as you turn into a corner, but I'm just driving along, I'm kind of mesmerised it, there's very little sound deadening, so you hear those little stones, but you also hear a lot of the engine, it's loud, it's raw and it's loud and there's a lot of volume, so if you were thinking new Ford GT might be quiet with a V6, you are definitely wrong, there's a character and a rawness to the sort of grumble that it makes behind me. Um, so if I turn it up now from normal into sport mode, it gets a little bit lively, a little bit noisier, the gear's gone down, I've got this large now gear selector on my display, if I want to go manual, I've got a button here to put it manual on the paddles, that's quick, you pull the paddle and it shifts very, very quickly, and it's a gentle, gentle squeeze of the throttle pedal, you hear a lot of the turbo noise, you can sort of literally just hear it spooling and then as you lift off the way it's sort of dumping out again. I'm just excited right now. This is this is the Ford GT. This is the most exciting car for me of the moment. And just turning in, it's so direct. You have so little, I guess, steering requirement input there that you need to do. Um, looking at the steering wheel, I've got a, a lot to take in. There are so many different buttons, and that's definitely on the confusing end. But indicators are easily reachable. Lights, wipers, horn in the center, down into second. There's a lot of natural noise back there. It sounds ferocious. It just sounds like they're angry. We're on mission in Sport Cup 2, sticky rubber. Oh my goodness. This is, this is next level exciting. There's just up to 5,000 revs. I'm being very uh, gentle and easy here. This has a lot of power, you know. Over 650 PS is um, serious supercar territory. And Ford, Ford said that creating this, they put it up against Ferrari's 458 Speciale. Then McLaren introduced the 675 LT. And basically, they've done quicker laps around every circuit than either of those two cars can manage. And that's kind of the aim. So it may not be quite as powerful as the McLaren, but it does have significantly more torque, nearly 50 newton meters more. <laughs> But it's quick because it's built for tracks. It's built for downforce, for aero, for grip. And I mean, just, yeah. 
It's amazing. Um, I will point out that it's very wide. In fact, I know the numbers. It's 2,004 millimeters wide body width. So it's wider um, than two meters. That makes it sort of Lamborghini Aventador size, but it feels completely fit for purpose. You've got this view over the scuttle across the square top of the steering wheel, where you're sort of looking out and you can see right down on the ground in front of you. And then I've got some twists in the road. I'm gonna just put my foot down slightly. this most gentle setup. Let's turn on comfort suspension. Just see, I guess, what it is like a little bit more as a rolling car and going over the little potholes. It's definitely on the firm end. One thing I do like is the uh, suspension lifter button that you have here. You give it one press and the front just lifts up instantly, just like the track mode. Um, and you get a little bit more clearance. One press again and it drops back down. There's no waiting for that to happen. It's just 
intermediate and they're right there for you. And in wet mode, you could be manual on the paddles, which by the way, are really nice. They're sort of hollowed out, um, I guess, for weight saving, but they give a nice feel as well. Um, and a very sort of assured press, which is always, I guess, what you want when you're driving in this kind of thing. Visibility, not the best, it's huge. You look out through the sort of flying buttress in the door mirror, which is cool. They have narrow sort of ends of the mirrors, but you're not, so you're not gonna see that much behind you. But let's face it, if you're in one of these, you're looking in front of you, not behind, aren't you? You're looking at what's going on up ahead. Rear view for how small the hatch is is actually pretty decent. You've got a nice sort of sight line out the back across the top of the engine. So that's not bad at all, really. Um, general sort of comforts, like I said, is pretty well equipped. You've got the reverse camera to help you park it. It cruises along gently. Um, steering is quite heavy, uh, even at slow speed. And it has, you know, there's no sort of wiggle room in the middle. It's instant sport sort of driving experience style. You've got those gauges on the display, which are neat. You've got cruise control. You've got that sort of side of things. Um, that all works, I guess, pretty well. But we're getting back towards the main road. So let's go back to sport. Gets tells me that it's gone back into uh, the harder suspension mode. Let's go back into manual. It has to be driven manually, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Like, just slow roll away. And unfortunately, I have a car right in front of me, a French car, so I have to find a place to go past. Here on the road in the UK, but it really isn't. It's just fine. I mean, it's 
definitely a far bend, but it's manageable. It's you can handle it. Wow. <laughs> this is insane, guys. One thing that I have not tried yet is this car's launch control. So let's just bring it to a standstill for a moment here. Uh, obviously nothing behind. In this, all you do is foot on the brake, foot on the throttle, let the boost build, and off you go! Away it moves! <laughs> it's savagely ferocious! It just picks up and goes! One other thing as well as that, by the way, is if you then put it in normal and wet mode, the difference you notice in terms of the shift points, um, we're still in manual actually as it happens, but it gets significantly earlier on the shifts, significantly softer gear changes. They don't sort of wait or hesitate anywhere nearly as long. And the throttle response as well makes a huge difference. But even in wet with soft mode, it's still very much race car, so don't be kind of fooled by that. But the way it gets moving, however, is pretty insane. The more time I have in here, Loving it and loving it. It is such an exciting car to drive. And a lot of people have said, you know, some of the buzz has gone, but when you've been in one of these, and this is what I heard from a video I've seen as well, when you've been in it, you will never look at any other cars the same way. And this sort of price point, how close this is to a full raw race car experience with all the power and drama that you want and the feeling and the noise, it sort of envelopes you. It's all around. Everything. I just, I am completely in dreamland driving this car. Oh my goodness. And the way the wind just, the way it flies down so quickly, it just drops out of nowhere straight down to the bottom. This has been epic. But let's sort of park up and have a look around here and take it all in. Now, this drive has been awesome. There are a couple of things. So the car has this kind of sensation that it wants to tramline almost, which is no surprise given how fat the rear tires are. And then the heaviness of the steering, it's really, the small movement is very much on the heavy end, but that's what makes it so rewarding when you're really going for it, which obviously I can't do on the road in this environment as much as I wish I could, because this is a track car and race cars are obviously set up for completely high speeds, top end downforce. And at that side of things, it just feels mega. It's literally crazy. Now, while we're sat here, I just want to have a quick little listen to this um, because obviously twin turbocharged v6 let's give it a couple of blips and hear how it sounds it's not bad then at all is it i mean it's really really quite throaty quite loud visceral raw involving which you don't necessarily expect from a v6 and you've got all the turbo noise going on which basically makes a really nice sound package so i think a lot of people who sort of say it doesn't have a v8 that's a disaster basically are wrong this is kind of the future obviously engine downsizing shrinking is to do with efficiency economy um, all sorts of environmental reasons but in this instance you've got more than enough power and it sounds amazing and the shift noise is great so what more could you want really but let's take a further look around everything that I am looking at in here and this car. And let's start almost behind my shoulder, um, where we have there the harnesses, um, where you can bolt them onto the monocoque that I told you about earlier. So literally bolted onto the backboard uh, behind the seat. This seat panel folds. There's a little lever tucked in somewhere um, to fold it back. Um, you've got the emergency door release, by the way. If you couldn't open the door for some reason, you can pull this and then pop it open. Down here on the door itself, you've obviously got your mirror controls, uh, windows, lock and unlock and then here the button the sort of digital button electronic button i should say to open and close the door kind of like how the air conditioning vents come through here and then out through these twin uh, vents you have here in the side just the way you see everything down at the bottom all the carbon fiber all the openings um, and then that is really quite sturdy that support there uh, so moving around you've got the button to open the uh, rear boot engine bay your lights um, we'll come and have a look at the headlights outside because they're really really quite cool um, and uh, brighter and darker stuff. Then you've got more sort of clear way through here. The stickers from the Goodwood Festival of Speed, which is pretty neat. And then quite a large A pillar because it contains the roll cage. So there's a cage up through here and through here, which is kind of neat. 
neat um, the way they've managed to integrate all of that. You've got a small sun visor, not the uh, largest thing in the world. Um, lights up here as per usual. I'm switch them on there. Nothing crazy about that. An almost borderless mirror, which is quite nice. And if I come here, you can see what I mean about the view backwards. You can see quite a lot through a small gap back there. But let's come down now to the driver zone. And you might have seen the shift lights flashing in my driving, which is kind of cool. And um, your mode selector here rotates. So if we put it back into normal mode, that is completely standard when you've just jumped in the car for the first time. Normal mode, you can configure which gauges are there, by the way, you can change all of that. Um, then you go off into sport mode and then you would go into track mode one beyond that, where you then have to press OK to confirm the drop, and down the car goes, and then you're in track mode, where you get slightly different displays and icons and things on the screen. Uh, but that's all quite simple, but effective. It's very easy to see, very easy to read. The uh, top end of the rev counter obviously extended across the middle, working in harmony with the shift lights to basically not obstruct your view. Um, you get great visibility about sort of feedback and information from the car there. Then just moving down, I touched on it obviously earlier, the controls and things around the uh, steering wheel, all pretty self-explanatory indicators, as you'd expect. The light flash button here, which is kind of cool. So when you press that, it's sort of like flashing the lights, like in a race car, you know, if you're coming up fast behind somebody, flash, 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 flash. So that's neat, I like that a lot. Um, automatic lights, of course. Then on the back of the steering column, if we just come around, and these shift paddles I referred to as well earlier, which are pretty neat pieces. And everything's basically carbon fiber. Everywhere you look, it's carbon fiber with the blue Alcantara on this car around the top, which is really, really nice. Um, I like that a lot. And I also like actually in track mode how you get the fuel gauge as a percentage. It tells me down to 77% there, uh, which is kind of neat as well. So all the rest here works. I mean, as you kind of expect it to, you've just got to get used to finding everything. But you know, indicators are within reach without having to move your hands. So that's quite neat um, and easy there too. So as we shuffle to the right, we have the whole infotainment system, which I'm actually going to come back to in a moment, on and off to hush it away if you want to. Um, climate controls here, um, pretty basic settings, you know, temperature, we're in Fahrenheit here, fan speed or automatic, recirc, air conditioning, and then just where you want the uh, fans to be pointing. So you can't really change very much um, on the climate side. To run through the sync system then quickly. So let's start at the beginning. Audio, the usual kind of stuff. You could have your iPod connected through those USBs or listen to the radio. You've got your phone, obviously you connect any phone via Bluetooth. Nav, pretty standard self-explanatory stuff on the nav. Apps, so this is kind of cool. You can have like apps that you've installed and set up on the car. So the Ford Track uh, telemetry app, for example, which would be kind of neat. And at the end, you've got your settings where basically you can find, again, everything you would probably expect to see in here if we go into general, um, all the sort of usual bits and pieces. It's quite, there's a tiny bit of lag on it, but it's not the worst system in the world. It seems to have everything, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, those are both pretty neat. Um, into vehicle, camera settings, um, uh, all of this uh, can be found in there, I guess, fairly simply. This hasn't taken me too much effort to scroll through and take a look at everything. Um, your audio settings, uh, all seats, well there are only two of them. Um, yeah, not really that much else to, to show you I guess in here, apart from just clicking through and letting you see the different um, different options. But there are software updates to come, we are in a pre-production vehicle, do not forget that. This all seems to uh, do the job pretty neatly. Going down here, two USB ports, which is neat, just in front of this sort of um, rubberized pouch to put stuff. I guess you could put your phone quite neatly in here, actually. That feels like it works just behind the um, engine start button. And then you get to the gearbox selector. Now, an interesting thing about this is when you've just turned the car on, it's kind of locked. It doesn't let you turn it. So you have to wait until the car is ready before you can swizzle it between modes. Um, one thing I notice is if you're driving and let's say you're in drive, but you do a three point turn, so you go into reverse and then back into drive, you'd have to re-enable manual. So it forgets that you're in manual, which um, I can see why, but I quite like it staying in manual if you can. Then you've got your hazard warning lights, um, your traction modes. Uh, so I guess if I were to press and hold that, uh, there we go. Uh, you can have advanced track or full traction control or performance or everything off, depending how you want it, basically. Um, so you've got a couple of different settings you can do with that. Then you've got the comfort suspension mode. So if you press that, um, not available because I'm in track. If we put it back into normal, the car jumps up, traction control goes back on, but now we would have the ability to soften the suspension and you get a comfort icon down at the bottom to show you that you've done that. And then the front lifter, which does magical things. 
is so fast. It's brilliant. And then the handbrake, um, if you want to enable it or disable it manually. Now, one other thing down here, check this party trick. Uh, that way, we've got cup holders. You've actually got two cup holders in here and they fold away into the center console there, into the carbon of that central tunnel. Um, if you really are desperate to have a drink while you're driving, those are very sneaky, but do the job perfectly. And then actually, is that a cigarette socket like um, plug just in front? Yeah, hidden away there into a fault socket. So there's not very much, you know, carbon floorboard with um, that you can open up and remove with some latches there. Literally just a floor mat to soften things up, but this is all the sort of carbon of the tub itself um, and the side sill. Actually, you can see here on this side the lever for bringing the backrest forwards and back. The seat itself is pretty nice, pretty comfortable. You've got the uh, hole in the centre here for your harnesses so you can mount them down to the floor as well as through the back so you can have a six point um, harness and they just sort of sit flush and super neat with the seat backs. So those work pretty well and then if you want to tuck that around the back when you've got your harnesses in that's quite easy to do and it's out the way. And then if I just point the camera backwards underneath the carbon, the carbon, the Alcantara headliner, you can see the engine bay. You can actually quite a good view of that backwards from in here, don't you? A lovely little look around, more carbon fiber, everything basically. The engine is literally right there at the backboard and it almost feels like the car needs a touch more sort of sound deadening back there, which I never thought I'd actually say because you hear so much of it coming through into the cabin. It's, it's very, very loud. It's very raw is the best way to describe this. And I think that's pretty much how all the sort of publications that have featured it have sort of touched on the car and basically sort of said that it is a complete race car experience for the road. It is so much more so than other road cars. From a performance point of view, from what I can tell, it's fast. You lose track when you don't drive them back to back of how all of these cars are. Well, it's really, really quick. Anyway, let's jump back out because there are one or two other things I want to show you outside the car. One other thing though, just as I swing my legs out of the car here, I'm gonna sit up on the side sill to show you the pedal box. So that pedal box, like I mentioned earlier, you pull this lever and uh, if I put my foot in basically to give it some pressure, you pull the lever, there we go, and that slides forwards and backwards depending where exactly you wanna have it. So that's kind of neat how that system works and then it just sort of locks in place. But let's turn off the car for a moment and hop out. Farewell for now to the cabin of the Ford GT. So let's close the door down, which you do so by giving it a good press there next to the button. And you've got the fuel cap here, interestingly, which is kind of under the buttress. So you give that a press and it opens up. So it has Ford's easy fuel system, but you'd obviously have to be very aware that you might be dripping fuel over the body. So when you take out the pump, you'll want to be very careful of that. Just a good thing to know. Close that back up. It's quite neat though, out the way, hidden um, away from sight. But actually just here, even there, you can see the carbon fiber through this front mesh um, of whichever part of the car is exactly inside there. And that's what I love about it. It's not sort of, nothing's trying to hide. It's just pure for purpose. And these are the standard wheels, by the way, obviously huge carbon ceramics, um, but the standard wheels, you can also have it with carbon fiber wheels. If you choose to opt those, you can have that satin carbon fiber in gloss carbon or satin carbon, or I think painted black as well, should you prefer. And this is one of the regular color choices. You can have a series of different colors or painted your own to match. And you can have racing stripes on the car as well, different kinds of stripes. But this is a really nice spec. This is the launch spec. This is the configuration um, that the car was launched. And I presume in which this car is going to remain on Ford of Europe's fleet. But I mean, one other thing actually, I haven't talked about the headlights. Just have a look at the design of these headlights. They are so ridiculously cool. Now I haven't driven it in the dark, so I can't tell you how good they are but the full LEDs and just the way they're shaped and the way these sort of eyes work. Now the previous generation, the 2004 GT, had sort of 100 written in the headlights because it was Ford's 100th anniversary, which was a kind of cool touch as well. Um, but those are very neat. And it remains retains so much of that styling of the previous generation. It's instantly recognizable as a Ford GT, uh, which is what's really, really cool about it, even though it's so heavily moved on and changed and updated and new things obviously that they've learned and integrated for this car so my goodness that's my first drive in the Ford GT first of many in the future I mean I'm not really sure what else can I show you as we walk around I mean just the back end looking through here how open that is how just how cool it is look at that look all the way through to the door mirror it's awesome and then the way these hydraulic struts work to put that wing up and down so quickly 
Uh, you've got the brake lights obviously integrated into the back of the wing here. And you can see a little bit through the engine. It is closed. It's just open for uh, airflow as well out through the back there. And then down here under the diffuser, haven't talked much about the under car aero, but obviously there's a lot going on, all the fins again for downforce. And remember this thing has 150 horsepower more than the race car, give or take. This is a very, very, very powerful, very quick beast of a machine. And it's just been awesome to enjoy taking it for a drive here. The first opportunity to see what it is all about. And yeah, I mean, what a day, right? What a day. I hope you've enjoyed this kind of thorough look in detail at this car, looking at all the sort of ins and outs and everything about it because, well, I've had a pretty mega time and I'm really quite sad to say farewell to it. It's very windy here as well, so I apologize for that, but we've come up to drive these awesome, awesome roads and I've had an amazing time. So a big thanks to Ford for this opportunity to sort of kickstart, I guess, or continue the road to my GT. Obviously, I went up the hill in this car with Harry Tinknell at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Now I've driven it, and at some point down the line, it's gonna be time for mine and my kind of build process, order process, and ultimately the car to arrive here in the UK in due course. So I'm sure this is not the end of Ford GTs on my channel, so you will enjoy plenty more videos, but thank you very, very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this one, and I will catch up with you again very soon. Cheers.